Well, good morning and welcome to Matins on this Friday of the third week after the Epiphany. Thank you for being with me this morning. <laughs> the scriptures we're using today are Psalm 88. We'll finish Genesis chapter 17 and uh, we'll catch just the middle part of Hebrews chapter 10. Now let's begin with a word of prayer. Would you please pray with me? Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hmm. Sorry. Give me just a second. There we go. All right. <clears throat> O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship him. Alleluia. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Alleluia. All right. Psalm 88. <clears throat> o Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength. Lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction... Will your wonders be known in the dark, or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me, and darkness is my only companion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, author of our salvation and redeemer of all, for us you descended to the dead and broke the grip of death. Hear the prayers of your family and lift us from our slavery and evil that we may be set free to see your Father's glory now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> okay, our first reading, Genesis 17, we'll read verses 15 to 27. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. 
Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. When he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all those born in his house or bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house. And he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very day, Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised, and all the men of his house, those born in the house and those bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> okay. So, the first part of chapter 17 we read yesterday was about God establishing his covenant, okay, and the sign of the covenant, and God commanded him about this circumcision. But it began with God giving Abram a new name and renaming him Abraham. So he went from Abram, great father, to Abraham, father of nations. So Sarai, um, <clears throat> and I don't remember what Sarai means, but her name gets changed to Sarah, which means princess. Oh, Sarai and Sarah. Both mean princess, but the changing of the name <clears throat> um, goes with Abraham receiving a new name and a new uh, a new path in life, a new journey, a new a new start with this covenant with God. So it's a fitting that that Sarai should get a new name as well. God's going to bless her. God will give Abraham a son by her. Look at this. The Hebrew here is, "I have given you a son." right? By Sarah. It's already done. It's complete, right? Not future, present and completed action. I will bless her. She shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. That's the same promise to Abraham, and he will do this with Sarah. Abraham fell on his face, an act of humility and worship, and laughed. I'm 100 years old. I'm not going to have a baby. Sarah's 90. She's not going to have a baby. That just doesn't happen in, in men and women that age. It's just not, not how things work. And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. I, I have a child. Bless him. Right? Sarah took Sarai took matters into her own hands and gave Abraham her, her maidservant. Here, have a child. I'm barren, Sarah says. Sarah says, I'm barren, but she might not be. Why don't you lay with her, take her as your wife, and have a child with her? And they did. That's Ishmael. But that's not what God promised. God had already promised Abraham a child with Sarah. Right? And after this child was born, no, that's not how it's supposed to work. I will give you a child with your wife, Sarai. Now, Sarah. <clears throat> But God, why can't you bless the son I already have? Because that's not my plan, God says. No, Sarah, your wife will bear you a son. And God is, I can see God going, I already told you this. You will call his name Isaac. Now, this is new. We've not heard the name before. He laughs, right? Why? Because Abraham laughed. Isaac, I will establish, God. this is God speaking, I'll establish my covenant with Isaac as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him, right? That's where the promise will go, the covenant through Isaac, from it to Abraham, through Isaac, to their descendants. Ishmael, well, I heard you. 
So I've blessed him. He'll be fruitful. I'll multiply him greatly. He, he will have many, many descendants. Twelve princes, which is interesting. There's their names. Uh, not any we recognize necessarily as standouts in the biblical story, but he will also become a great nation. These have become what we know as the Arabic peoples. Okay. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, God says. Sarah will bear this son to you at this time next year. Finally, now we have a timeline. Before it was, I will do this, but we didn't know when. Now we know when. Okay. God will make it happen. And he will make it happen in his time. That's always our problem, isn't it? God, we ask God for something. We trust that he'll do it. But he doesn't do it when we want him to. Hmm. And then we do like Sarah did and take matters into our own hands and it never works out. So when God had finished talking with Abraham, he went up, he left. Abraham took Ishmael, his son. This is the act of faith and obedience. All those born in his house or bought with his money, right? So if his servants had children, that's part of Abraham's household. Okay, not his family, but his household. And the command was every male in your household, every male among the men of Abraham's house, he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. And after that, it will be eight days after they're born, signifying the first day of the new creation, right? Abraham was 99 years old when he did this. He did it to himself. He did it to his son, Ishmael, who was 13. And that day, Abraham didn't waste any time. That day, Abraham and his son were circumcised. And all the men of his house, and those born in the house, and those bought with money from a foreigner, servants, slaves, all of them were circumcised that day. That must have been quite a scene. But Abraham is the picture of faith for us. We look to him as the faithful and obedient servant. And this is just one example. He did it. He did it. God told him, and he did it. You have you will walk my way so that I can bless you. If I'm if if he's going to be able to bless him, he has to be able to walk the way that God tells him to. And this is the first command he gets. Well, after leave the land of your fathers and go where I will tell you, this <laughs> circumcision is the sign of obedience, and it's the sign of the people of the covenant. That's how they will know. All right. <clears throat> So, and tomorrow we'll read chapter eight, 18, or at least the first part of it. Uh, yeah, this is when, uh, yeah, the three men visit. So that's what we'll get into tomorrow. All right, Hebrews <clears throat> chapter 10, we'll read verses 11 to 25. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant of that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have the confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
All right. So we've been talking about these sacrifices, right? And um, the last couple of days, we've been talking about how the sacrifices of the old covenant, the burnt offerings and sin offerings, which we were commanded to offer, right? They they did not do anything to the person offering them, right? They did not perfect that person, right? Right? Um, where did it say that? The worshipers having, in these sacrifices, there's a reminder of sin every year. It's impossible for these sacrifices to take away sins, right? If they did, they wouldn't have to do them over and over again. That's not... That's not how this one works. So the priest every day offers the same sacrifices over and over again because people keep committing the same sins because they don't change as a result of those old sacrifices, those old offerings. They can never take away sins. Christ's offering, however, only had to be made once. It was good enough to pay the price for all sin, for all people, for all time. That it was a good enough offering. And then he sat down at the right hand. He ascended and sat down at the right hand of God and waited until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet until the victory is final and complete. By a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Now notice this is ongoing action. This is not a completed action yet. It will be eventually right now it's a process that's ongoing right and his offering <clears throat> did the work right we're still being made holy but it cleansed us perfectly okay and the holy spirit also bears witness here's the covenant now what's this this is what jeremiah 31 yeah jeremiah 31 right here's the covenant i'll put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds Okay. They will know who I am, says God. Right? They will just know. And I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds. No, I'm not going to hold on to a grudge, God says. Where there is forgiveness of sins and lawless deeds, there is no longer any offering for sin. If it's forgiven, you don't have to offer atoning sacrifice anymore. It's not necessary. Okay. Therefore, because of all this, because this one single sacrifice perfected perfected all those who are being sanctified. That's all of us, right? Because that's been done, because God will remember our sins and our lawless deeds no more. Therefore, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, right? That's the only way you can do that. You can only go in there after you've been purified. That's happened by Jesus' blood, not by the blood of bulls and goats. By the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is his flesh. Okay. Now we're talking about the temple. Remember, the temple is just a shadow of the heavenly temple, the heavenly dwelling. Um, <clears throat> okay. Into the holy places here. We're talking not about the, the earthly temple, but talking about heaven. Um, we are given access to God in heaven by Jesus' blood, by the new and living way he opened for us. Okay. Um, as, as the high priest passed through the curtain to enter the most holy place in the earthly temple, we enter heaven only through Christ's flesh only because his body and um, and blood were given for us. Now, Christ's body and soul were divided in death as the curtain of the temple was torn, right, when he gave up his spirit. And just as the curtain was torn open, giving way to the holiest place in the temple, in the same way our way into heaven through Christ is now open, okay? That's what the author is saying. Prior to that... No one but the high priest could go into that holiest place. And even then, only on the Day of Atonement, and only when he had made all the sacrifices necessary for himself and his people. Right? But this is the new and living way. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, 
also Jesus. He's the sacrifice and also the priest. Since we have him, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. We have nothing to be worried about now. With our hearts sprinkled clean, cleansed by his blood from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water, baptism. Okay? We should no longer have an evil conscience weighing us down because we have been forgiven. We don't need to hold on to our guilt. We've been forgiven. We've been washed in our baptism. So let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Right? Hold on to that. We can we confess this. We know where our hope is. We have been given access to the holy places, to God in heaven. Right? We, we can do this without any doubt, without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. God always keeps his promise because that's God who made this promise. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. This is what we do in response to this promise and this hope and this forgiveness and this cleansing and this freedom that we've been given. Now, together, we should be doing works of love good works for the kingdom, and not neglecting to meet together. We shouldn't just be hermits. We should come together to worship God. Some have not done this, but we should come together to encourage each other. And all the more, as you see, the day draw near. This is um, usually when you say the day, you talk about the day of judgment. Um, let's make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, when Christ will return for judgment, the day drawing near. We need to be doing these things that he has commanded us to do. That is why we were saved, so that we could do this. To not do that is to squander the gift we've been given. Okay. Let's conclude. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Our Lord and Savior, begotten before all ages, revealed himself to the world. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, begotten before all ages, revealed himself to the world. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, who art far away, but not far, and silent except for the sound of footsteps on the path beyond, and this ceaseless knocking at the door of our hearts. Do thou reveal thyself to us, to each in the way thou seest fit, that for all our darkness it may be light again, out of our troubles granting us that peace which makes all things peaceful. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oops. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And that concludes our matins for this Friday. Thank you for spending this time in the word with me. And thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day he's given to you. Um, still planning on having supper just tomorrow at the usual time and then worship on Sunday. So hope you can uh, join me for at least some of that. So again, thank you. Pardon me. Thank you for being with me. I wish you a blessed rest of your Friday and of your weekend. And until we can be together again, whenever that is, may God bless and keep you.